Ay -ya. Hey guys, it's James here with another Reaper tutorial. In this video, I'll show you 10 Reaper tips that will make working in Reaper more efficient. If you're new to the channel, I'm a full-time mixing and mastering engineer, and I create all kinds of awesome video catered to fellow audio engineers, music producers, and musicians. So if you're one of us, consider subscribing. I also made a couple of advanced Reaper tutorials last year that will drastically speed up your workflow in Reaper. You can find them over here or in the description. Before we dive in, make sure you have SWS extensions installed because some of the tips I'm going to show you will require that. The first tip I'll show you is how to bypass plugin on the same FX slot for multiple tracks, like so. This is super helpful if you put some kind of tape, console, or preamp emulation plugin across many tracks, and you want to hear what kind of difference the plugin is making. Or if you're trying to test which EQ's Hive Shell Boost sounds the best in your mix. Instead of manually bypassing each one, you will just need to hit a button now. So here we have some tracks and we have soft tubes tape plugin as the first FX on these tracks. And then we have the Focusrite console as the second FX slot from Plugin Alliance. Now let's say I just want to bypass all these tape plugins just to see what the tape is doing to the audio. So all we need to do is go to action and click show action list. And then here type bypass and you see a whole bunch of actions by SWS extensions. If you scroll down here, you can see that toggle FX1 bypass for selected tracks. So what you need to do is select all the tracks with the plugin you want to bypass. And this is FX1 because it's the first slot and go here, click run. And there we go, they're all bypassed. Now let's say I want to bypass all the Focusrite console to see you know, what the console is doing to the audio tracks. You can just, you know, the same thing, go here, FX2, run, just like that. And they're all being bypassed and unbypassed as you click that. Now, obviously you can easily assign the action to a button like so, or assign this to a keyboard shortcut so you can always just hit one click and then you can do this action. It's very, very handy. The second tip I'll give you is linking the controls of two plugins on the same track. So when you change a control on the first plugin, the corresponding control on the other plugin will also be changed. So here I have two plugins on the same track and right now they're not linked as you can see. So the first thing to do when you want to link some controls of two plugins together is to go to parameter here, go to FX parameter list, parameter modulation slash MIDI link. So let's say I want to link the lead gain. I click that and this window will pop up. And from here, you click link from MIDI or FX parameter. And this is where you select the other control you want to link to. So it's not going to be self because that's just, you don't want it to be linking control within the same plugin. We want to go to the other one and we find the same option, which is gain. Click that and there we go. Now it's linked. And if we can take a look at here, if I move this, they're both linked. There's a slightly easier way to do this is, for example, if you want to link the treble, right? So before you go to parameters here, you move it first a little bit and then return it back to the original position. And in here, it will show up your last touched parameter. And so instead of going into FX parameter list and then go here and find the one you want, you can actually just go here, click this one, and then you kind of skip a step. And from here, I want to link that. Um, that was the treble. So I want to link that to the lead treble. There we go. And now they are linked. The third tip I'll give you is about the extended solo and mute features. Now, if you are a Reaper veteran, you might already know this, but I know for sure not everybody does because I've been asked about it. So what I meant by extend a solo and mute features is that other than the standard solo mute like that, if you right click on the mute button or the solo button, you can see that there are other extra solo and mute features that are very, very helpful. One of the solo features that I use very often is the exclusive solo function because it allows you to quickly solo one track without unsoloing another track. So like this. So instead of soloing, unsoloing, and soloing the other one, I can just hold down Shift and Alt or Command and Option in Mac and just click whichever one I want. And I can solo the thing like that. 
A lot of the times I use this for comparison. So for example, if I have two tracks here, I want to compare them and go back and forth between them really quickly. I can just do that. And in that way, I can easily compare what they sound like. Some other helpful solo feature include uh, solo defeat, which means that this track will not be muted when you're soloing the other tracks like so. As you can see, no matter what I solo, this track is never going to be muted. One very helpful mute feature is the uh, mute all. So let's say you have some tracks that you have muted before, but now you want them to be unmuted. Instead of clicking a mute one by one, you can actually just hold control and click the mute button and they will be unmuted. It doesn't actually have to be on the uh, unmute either. So you can click on any other mute button. They will all still be unmuted. Another helpful feature is exclusive mute, which is kind of similar to exclusive solo. So you, whenever you're holding control and alt or command and option and hit mute, you are just muting that one track instead of, you know, muting multiple, you can just mute like that. So that's very helpful as well. There's also the mute all others, which is by holding alt or command, you can just mute all the other tracks like that, which can also come in handy in certain situations. The fourth tip I want to share with you is a custom action that makes creating photo tracks faster and easier in Reaper. In Logic Pro X, there is a shortcut that allows you to select multiple tracks and nest them under a new photo track. Now making folders is a little bit less intuitive in Reaper by default. So for example, if I want these two tracks to be in a folder, I would have to create a new track and drag it to the top and then click this folder button. And now it's putting everything underneath to be part of the folder. So now I have to click over here like that to make sure the other ones are not in a folder. And now that's how I have a folder. But that's, as you can see, quite a few clicks. What if we can just select both tracks and hit a shortcut? And now we have a folder track like that. Isn't that way faster? I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. All you have to do is go to actions, show action list, click new action and new custom action. So now what you need to do is put together the list I have here. So you can search the action in here in a filter and drag it over here and make sure you have every single one over here in the right order. Make sure you check these consolidate undo points so that you can undo the action if you don't want to. And once you have all the actions here, make sure you give it a name and click OK. And now you can assign a shortcut to it. And now you can select multiple tracks that you want to make a folder out of and hit the shortcut. And now all these tracks will be put under a new separate folder track. And you can even put in a track name directly after you use the action. So you don't have to double click it and put in the track name. The fifth tip I want to share with you is the very handy loudness utility that comes with SWS extensions. I do quite a lot of mastering. so. It's quite important for me to check a master's loudness levels, especially when it comes to mastering albums. Even if you don't do any mastering, you might be curious what loudness level a song is mastered at. It's super easy to do this in Reaper. Here I have all the master files for one of the records that I did this year. And let's say I want to check the loudness of all of them to make sure they're kind of more or less in the same range. All we have to do is select all the media items like that and then go to extensions, go down here, loudness, and analyze selected items. And Reaper will actually just go ahead and analyze all the items. And it tells you a whole bunch of loudness info on the tracks, such as integrated, range, true peak, maximum short-term loudness, and stuff like that. If you don't see all these options here, you can actually right click here and select whichever one that you want to see. If you want even more options, you can click options here and you can see that there's a whole bunch of options that you can use. You can measure the true peak. You can use high precision mode. You can even change the unit from LUFS to LU and a whole bunch of things like that. The sixth tip I have for you is making a track in a project bypass the entire master bus plugin chain. Meaning that when you play this track in a project, it won't be affected by any plugin on the master bus. This is super helpful if you want to put some reference track in your session and you want to switch between the reference track and your mix without always having to disable the master bus plugins. So let's say I want to use this track as the reference track and I don't want it to go through any effects I have on here. So right now, if I open this EQ, I have a low pass filter on it just so you can hear the effects. And if I play it, you can see that 
it sounds like there is a low pass effect on the track. I don't want that because I want this track to bypass the master chain. So what you need to do here is go to the route button and now undo the master send. But if you play it now, there will be no sound. In order to listen to it, what you need to do now is actually go down here to audio hardware output and actually add a hardware output to your track. Now the options here will vary based on the interface you use, but generally you should be able to find a speaker or some kind of output for your interface. If I put this one here, now this is all good. Now I close this one and I play the song. As you could hear, it's now no longer affected by the low pass filter anymore. The seventh tip I have for you is setting zero minute and zero seconds at anywhere in a ruler instead of the default bar one. This is super helpful if your project doesn't start right at bar one for reasons like you might want to add something at the beginning of the song later on, or if you simply want to have half a second of silence before the song starts, but you still want the time code in the ruler to match the time code in the rendered audio file. So when your client or your bandmates give you timestamp notes, you can find the exact timestamp in your project ruler. So let's say my project actually starts at bar seven instead of very beginning. But when I render this audio for my clients and when they give me mix notes, they're gonna use timestamps that are not going to match with my ruler in here because for them, here is the zero second, but for me, this is already 12 seconds. And what I can do to mitigate that is, first of all, make sure you put your cursor at where you want it to be zero seconds, which means the start of your render. And then now you go to file, project settings, and go to project settings over here and click set zero, zero, zero to edit cursor like that and click okay. And now if you notice, this becomes instead of 12 seconds now is zero seconds. So this way your time code will match your rendered file time code. And that will make doing revisions and referring to timestamps a lot easier. The eighth tip I have for you is how to play only the media item under your mouse cursor. In other DOS like Cubase, there is a play tool that you can assign to your mouse. And when you click and hold it, it will play the audio file under it. Now we have a play tool. So this would allow us to play back. By default, there is no such tool in Reaper, but we can create one that does the same thing. What we want to achieve in Reaper is a similar thing, which is that being able to quickly audition different media items like this. Very, very handy. And it's very easy to do that. All you have to do is go to actions, go to show action list, and now search play under. You'll see a whole bunch of actions here. And the one you're looking for is this one. It's a very long one, I know. So for me, I've assigned control and space to this shortcut. So what happened is now, as long as I hold down control and space, it will play whatever is underneath my mouse cursor until I release it. And obviously you can assign this to any shortcuts you want. Just make sure you put one that is easy to use. And this action would become very helpful when you're mixing, recording, or writing music. The ninth tip I have for you is the rather hidden batch file slash item converter. If you're doing any kind of music work, it's pretty common to run into situations where you need to convert audio file formats. And in case you didn't know, Reaper has a pretty awesome converter tool. To find a batch file item converter, go to file down here. You can see batch file item converter. Click that and you can see this window. And in here you can add files like so. I'm gonna add some WAV files here like that. And you can select the output obviously and file name. But what's awesome is that you can actually put some FX on it if you want. So in here you can add some, I don't know, dithering or some compression depending on what you're looking for. So you can add some FX there. You can also add metadata for your tracks. And obviously you can use different formats. You can even save presets. So next time it's easier to find the settings that you wanted. This tool is super helpful for any of your file converting needs. The 10th tip, which is also the last tip I have for you, 
is this custom action that allows you to search and replace track names to insert order number at the beginning of a track names and to delete a specified number of letters from the beginning or the end of the track name. This is super helpful if you receive numbered or well-labeled multi-tracks from bands, which is a good practice by the way, but you don't really need the order numbers or the labels anymore after you have imported the tracks into Reaper. This handy little tool will help you delete those numbers or labels all at once with just one click. So it's pretty common for recording engineers to number their files. So when you import them, they're in the right order like this one. But once the files are in the session, the numbers are kind of pointless and they can take up space that you might not want. So the first thing you need to do is to download a little script to make this happen. All you need to do is go to the extensions, rear pack, and choose browse packages. And you want to look for is X R A Y M search. And you will see three actions in here. The one you're looking for is search and replace in selected tracks name. So all you need to do is click that and right click, click install. If you don't have it installed, I have it already installed, which is why it's showing uninstalled, but just install it and then you're good to go. And then you just click OK. And now if you go to your action list and find the action, which is X R A Y, you can see it's over here. Now, before you run this, first of all, you want to select the tracks that you want to affect. So in this case, I want to get rid of all the numbers in, in these tracks and I selected them. And now I go to actions, show action list, X RAM. Obviously you can assign a shortcut for it so you can access it easier. Click it, run. And you can see this little window and there is a function for search, replace, truncate from start, truncate from end, insert a start. You can insert serial number and insert at the end. So what we're looking for right now is to truncate from start. And if you look at here is two numbers and one space. So that's three characters, type three, click OK. And as you can see here, all the numbers are gone and now it's a lot cleaner in a session. Now, let's say you're trying to do the opposite thing, which is that you want to add some numbers to the tracks. Again, make sure you selected all of them. Go back here, run the action again. And this time you go here because you want to insert serial number. So go back here and put a backward slash and put E as is indicated here, E slash E for serial number click OK. And now you can see that the numbers are there, but now you realize that you want to add a space. So you can undo, go back here, run again, do the same thing, but just put a space in here and click OK. And now you can see that there's a space next to the numbers and they're all looking very nice. Now, let's say you want to replace the kick to a different spelling for some reason, it's for demonstration purposes. Um, you run it again and you can search what we want to replace is kick. So we're going to search for kick, K-I-C-K. And let's say we want to replace it with K-I-K, just like that. And if we click OK, you can see that the kick has been replaced and the rest is unaffected because there's no kick in the rest of the tracks. And obviously there's many other things you can do. You can truncate from the end. You can insert something at the end as well. So this is a very powerful little tool that is really handy to have in your Reaper setup. That's it for this video. Hit that like button if you find any of the tips helpful and subscribe if you're into music production. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.